Our next guest says the market is pricing in unrealistic earnings growth at this point. That investor should stop chasing the crowd. Instead, he's looking to some dividend aristocrats to position in from here. Let's bring in David Bonson. He's chief investment officer at the Bonson Group. David, good to see you. So um, I guess my worry would be if we're talking dividend growth, you miss out on a lot of young software names. Is that intentional? It is for us. I mean, we really believe that cash flow is king, and we think that the dividend growers, uh, through time uh, and their avoidance of a lot of the bursted bubbles that happen with the alternative, end up doing far better. And we have tons of track record to prove that. But I think that ultimately, uh, right now, people have actually gotten away with this recovery trade since the 2022 meltdown. There's been some names that have come back quite a bit. Now you see some of them. I mean, I think Tesla's down over 50 percent uh, and and Apple is in double digits down all the while. NVIDIA is still just climbing uh, vociferously. Those things don't tend to end well. But at the same time, if you believe that this AI thing isn't just a flash in the pan, it's not the metaverse, you know, it's not blockchain necessarily, that really it's going to change the way business happens. Shouldn't you allocate some portion of your portfolio to names that you think have some sustainable advantage there? Yeah, but I would recommend doing it at something that isn't trading at 50 times (laughs) forward earnings or assuming that margins will hold when revenue is up 10 times from what it is now. Margins don't hold with that kind of revenue growth. And so, for example, there's a dividend growing name called Broadcom that we own. It's gotten expensive. We have a lower weighting, but we've owned it for years now. It's very exposed to AI. IBM is exposed to AI. Texas Instruments. These are dividend growing names that have real cash flows that don't require you to buy into something that's up, you know, 250 percent in the blink of an eye. That's what I'm concerned about is the momentum chasing. Outside of tech, you also like Amgen, Johnson & Johnson, and MedStream Energy uh, ETF. Uh, p- pick one of those for me and tell me why. Well, I picked the Johnson & Johnson and Amgen because I wanted to be as boring as I could when we're talking about <laughs> NVIDIA. You talk about Johnson & Johnson trade, uh, growing a dividend for 65 years in a row. It doesn't get anyone excited. But you know the beta is less than half of that of the market. Uh, it may be time for us to get back into more low beta, very dependable cash flow growth. Amgen has grown the dividend double digits for over 10 years per year. I mean, that's massive internal growth. Uh, these biotech names have become great dividend growers. Midstream Energy is just absolutely a phenomenal high income, high growth of income story. Do you think about international in this environment? I'm looking at some of these India ETFs looking at the growth of the youth population, the big uh, nationwide adoption of digital and payments technology, and wondering, it's had quite a run, too, but the, the demographics don't seem to be slowing down. Yeah, we view the uh, international story as something that takes a real macro look, meaning is the best way to get international exposure companies that are based there or companies that are perhaps based in the U.S., U.S. accounting, U.S. governance, U.S. maturity and sophistication with capital markets, but nevertheless 50, 60 percent of sales coming from these markets. So it, there's a very global story with a lot of U.S.-based companies. India is doing great locally, but you have to translate that to a bottom-up story. You can't go buy an ETF for Minnesota. You can't buy an ETF for Texas. But there are companies in Minnesota, companies in Texas. We view it the same way with international markets. Okay. So back to your, uh, your, your call here that you've got to avoid investing strategies that simply buy the stocks that go up. Are you at all betting that stocks are going to go down? And is there a thought about what is going to be the catalyst that drives that moment for the markets? Yeah, no, we're not betting anything. I don't want to bet against the market going higher Mm. because NVIDIA could go up multiples from here. (laughs) Um, I just know how it ends. I know how these trades end. We've seen it over and over again. I've tried to devote much of my adult life to studying bubbles that burst. And I really believe that good companies can get into a bubble. We own Cisco now. I bought it at about $18. It's in the 50s. Cisco is right now 30% lower than it was 25 years ago. And yet 25 years ago, it wasn't like its business deteriorated. It's done nothing but grow. 
It's improved every year. Revenue, earnings, it's a great company. What's the problem? It was just too expensive. I'm a child of the late 90s. I grew up professionally managing money there. I see in NVIDIA some of the same risks that played out there, John. That's the story for us. All right. David Bonson, I appreciate you joining us here on The Exchange.